All throughout the history of car making, the luxury car has always existed. Being the highest form of style and quality the car market offered, over the years, the materials would keep on improving and technology pushing the car industry forward. However, over the recent five years, we've seen something start to brew deep inside of the luxury market. The image of brands like Lexus and Mercedes and BMW has started to become tainted. The materials have gone down a steep slope, the technology has become gimmicky and the design has changed in baffling ways. What happened to luxury cars? In 1989, a little company called Lexus would unveil their first luxury flagship sedan for the U.S. market. From the second the American public first laid eyes upon the LS400, they were in love. Not only was the exterior the pinnacle of peak automotive design, but the interior was a step above Lexus's competitors. Being purposefully engineered to be as comfortable and as silent as possible, some writers would even have said that if the windows were blacked out, you wouldn't be able to tell you were driving at all. The seats were made from the most high quality quality leather, and real Californian walnut trim decorated the interior. The LS400 had heated seats, which at the time was a benchmark of the most expensive cars. Auto off headlamps and power adjustable seat belts were also present on this car, plus a digital display for air conditioning. All this in a car from 1989. The first generation of LS400 is considered to be the greatest luxury sedan ever made. The innovation that the LS400 brought to the luxury scene pushed other automakers to play catch-up, and showed Europe that Japan can make fancy cars too. But why give you this brief history lesson on the LS400? Well, because I think that the interior of this car is the greatest interior ever made, plain and simple. I would argue that the interior of this car, a vehicle from 1989, is better constructed and made with better materials than a Lexus made in 2024. That is not a good thing. Can you imagine telling a dude in the late 80s that this would be the best it ever gets? Like, no other company in the next 30 years would get it as good as this one car. Materials and luxury cars have fallen off of a cliff, and I have a theory about this conundrum. Modern car makers put all of their design and energy into screens. Those big, yucky screens. The screens have taken over the car market, getting bigger and bigger every year. Car manufacturers seem to only to be able to focus on this aspect of interior design. The gauge clusters, materials, and special features are just an afterthought. Where the interiors of luxury cars used to be the most carefully constructed element of the car, now they seem to have mostly become cheap and basic. After all, everything in the interior must flow to the center screen. And if you don't believe me, I don't know why you wouldn't, after all, maybe the most bravest and most heroic man on YouTube, just look at these. BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Acura, and Lexus, they all look the same. If you cover the logos on the steering rails, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell these brands apart from the others. What the fuck is this piece of shit? It's like taking a dump in a different toilet. Regardless of the toilet, there is still a brown one in there. Now, look at these interiors from decades ago. Do you see what I'm saying? These interiors are different elements that made it a BMW, or made it a Lexus, or a Mercedes. You could see a BMW interior from 2003 and say, oh, that's a BMW interior or, oh, that's a Lexus interior. You might ask, well, Vice, who is doing luxury interiors well? I would say to you, my curious viewer, the two kings of American luxury cars, Lincoln and Cadillac. If you look at images of the inside of a Lincoln, it feels fancy. It feels old school and very, very expensive. If you look inside a Cadillac, it feels modern yet very, very luxurious in a good, real way. Why? Well, because the people who design these cars understand what a luxury vehicle is. In fact, I would go as far to say that Lincoln makes the best interiors in the entire industry. Well, maybe besides like Rolls Royce or something like that, but we aren't talking about that sort of luxury. Nearly all of the luxury brands across the world, especially Lexus, need to look at Lincoln and see how they are doing exactly what Lexus used to do. Hell, even what BMW used to do. Every luxury car these days has to be a sports car, which in my opinion is super lame. Sure, everyone loves a Lexus F Sport, and everyone loves an M car. Damn man, even the base trims of luxury cars are basically sports cars now. In every ad for brands like Acura and Genesis, they are all advertised as sporty cars. While this isn't entirely a new phenomenon, look at brands like Infinity. My Infinity has lights in 12 different places on it. Jesus had 12 disciples. Coincidence? I think not. 
However, this has started to take over the car world on a wide scale. That is pretty strange to me. Every luxury car has at least 250 plus horsepower, which is a wild amount of power for a Lexus ES or 3 Series, which are luxury economy cars. Why is this happening? Well, it is sort of complicated to me, because true, everyone loves to be fast, everyone loves to drive a, well, sports car, but in my opinion, I think it is try to give character to the car, to try to compensate for the stagnation of luxury cars creativity and innovation that used to push the market forward. Luxury cars used to just be cars because the point of buying a luxury car was for having a fancy car, not to be fast. What the hell is even that? Plus, these new luxury cars are getting more and more expensive to fix because if it isn't twin turbocharged these days, well, you're falling behind the industry as a brand. I mean, look at these Genesis engines, an already not at all reliable Hyundai engine, plus it is now a twin turbocharged V6. So you got two turbos which are already affecting that reliability and a Hyundai engine. Seems like a disaster waiting to happen to me. This section of sportiness is probably going to get me a lot of comments because it sounds a little bit like I'm trying to make cars slower. Don't get me wrong, I love fast cars, and I do think that it is a perfectly fine for luxury cars to make sports cars, but I don't like it when brands decide to make luxury cars fast in exchange for innovation and character. The Worst Defenders. Who are the brands to which I cast my ominous curse? My curse of ever sarcastic and witty judgment. Well, I have two very big offenders, and one that is just barely sneaking away from my heart's judgment today. We will start with a brand that is near and very dear to my heart, and as much as it pains me to say this, Lexus. Oh Lexus, what has happened to you? Remember when you were the leaders of luxury design and innovation? Now it just seems you're playing catch up constantly. And with your weird, basic, and sort of bland interiors is where I will focus my attention. Toyota interiors. Toyota has always seemed to be a step behind the rest of the industry whenever it comes to their interiors. They nearly never have been at the top of the industry interior wise, and where they put all their effort was into their crown jewel, Lexus. However, now it just seems that they have grown complacent. There are models of Lexuses that are just getting modern updated screens in fact, and it still looks outdated. <laughs> Get it together, Lexus. Also, please bring back the LS with a V8. Mercedes is sort of in a weird place as well. I'm not sure if you have all heard, but for seemingly the first time in the brand's history, Mercedes has a problem with complaints about cheap materials and loud squeaking plastic in their cars, which is not what you want from a car you spent 80 grand on. Plus, the screens in these new Mercs just look so bad. They're so horribly placed and just don't flow well together. Some cars do screens well, but Mercedes does not. Plus, Mercedes has slowly been falling in reliability year after year. And on reliability, this brings me to that little outlier. That sneaky company that is going to evade me listing it on this mini list of the brands that are doing the luxury cars the worst. BMW. BMW's slowly grown in reliability statistics and that is not good for Mercedes at all, as Merck is directly competing with BMW. Being the brand that makes cars that break more is not a good thing. And while I have been critical on the channel about BMW interiors, I would say that they are getting much better. A more traditionalist, classical luxury look is present in many modern Beamers, and that is a good thing. But all this talking about luxury cars is starting to make me feel a little bit insane and slightly douchey, so let's finish this video, shall we? Luxury cars have seemingly started to fall off in certain aspects. While I understand that this video is not as in-depth as I could have gone, I didn't really go that hard on luxury brands because, let's be honest, most people don't own any of these cars. I don't. I know you probably don't. But yeah, luxury cars have been in a weird identity crisis lately. I wanted to shine some of my bright, incredible professional opinion on this issue. It's just, I'm such a good guy. Thanks for watching. Also, my voice is still a little gone, so please. Don't comment about it.